Hi Capricorn, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will be from December 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for continuously coming back to the channel. If you're new, thank you. Uh, make sure that you like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel and share the videos. It means a lot. Uh, continue to do so. All links are below if you want to get your own personal reading, okay? So I have pulled a few cards for this week. Let's go ahead and get into this. How Capricorn comes into the week is the moon. Okay. Scorpio had the moon. Okay. How they came into the week. All right. And the advice this week is the ace of air. And the outcome this week is the king of fire. All right. So this could have something to do maybe with a past situation relationship someone returning from a past maybe someone you have children with or you know you knew from childhood someone who helps you with your children they could be romanticizing the situation or or vice versa you you've got some psychic insights in regards to this person they i don't know why i'm feeling like they could be older than you a different nationality or something of that nature uh there's something being repressed here or suppressed you or they feel differently how this is how you come into the week you you have reservation about someone but you suppress those feelings you haven't act on them you haven't talked about them you tried to push it down but now it's coming to the surface there's also an element of someone holding back or hiding something from you uh, the advice here is for you to speak your mind be clear in your communication you've got new ideas and some inspirations about yourself um, and you just want to see the situation for what it is and you do see it for what it is and you want to speak your mind about this um, this could be a challenge for you and also with this ace of air comes the new beginning because you spoke your mind it's at the end of the week I think you start to shift focus you start to focus on what it is you really want to happen uh, this could be in regards to business or your career you start to become more ambitious and motive you know motivated to seeing your vision come true you you're on fire about something you're, you're very passionate about seeing something through it looks like you come into the week in the cloud there could be spirit working on your behalf too behind the scenes there could also be an element of something being reserved from you something not being revealed ask the questions make sure you are being inquisitive make sure that you are you are um communicating your ideas uh communicating the inspiration for the ideas make sure that you're being very clear you see the truth you understand the truth you know it you've processed it don't romanticize a situation that has a lot of a lot more negative value than good than positive just because okay family it could be something involving family or you used to be a family this was something you had children with or by smart be smart in your decision making and in your uh, communication be smart here be objective what is the what is the end result here what is the objective if I say this I am trying to get to this point you know what is your object what are you what are you gunning for if you tell me that if you tell someone that they are a lousy dresser they don't know how to dress themselves they don't have any fashion sense if you tell that person that what is your objective in it is it to hurt their feelings or is it to help them uh, see that you know this is the truth of the matter you don't dress well I can help you. Is it 
Is it to get them to, you know, betterment? Or is it to harm them? What is your objective? So make sure that you're clear in your thoughts and your communication. Don't just be speaking to be speaking. There's no clear rationale, logic behind it all. That you you tend to get that type of speech when you're overly emotional about the subject matter and you have not rationally or logically thought it through and and formulated uh, a speech about the subject matter so that you can get uh, to be so you can be objective and get to the desired uh, resolution or outcome. Release your fears too. Something's holding you back. Because this is a person who's fearless. This is a person who has the thought. They move on the thought. There's no in between time. There's no toiling. There's no, oh, I just, I just, I just don't know. This is, I want to start a, a really high end tr uh, sock company trouser socks you know they're going to be made from the best fibers and all that stuff or whatever um so then this person would they, they have the idea the trouser sock company however you would word that uh and then they start to act on it okay i need a i need a i need um manufacturing i need um, um i need textiles i need to you know you just the ball gets turning here they start to institute what their the vision the, and their focus so clear and then focus release the fears be clear focus that's your entire week okay because you understand that something is for you something is innately embedded in you to do to be you know that there's a sense of usefulness in this very arena for you okay Wow, and then you can actually be victorious at it if you make the decision to put all your energy, effort, time behind it, okay? All right, Capricorn, stay tuned for the next segment of this reading. It's very good. But real advice, uh, coupled with the Tarot, uh, but real advice, real tangible advice that you can use. I hope that it resonates. I hope that this reading resonates with you. If it did, go over to the website, book your own reading there. Make sure you click the like button. Thank you, Capricorn. Have a really good week. Um, happy holidays. Take care. Hello, everyone. So today on Elle's Real Corner. All right. So today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men. You can pertain this to women too, but the demographics of my channel are it's more women watching uh, the videos, uh subscribing to the channel than men so i apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex just apply it to your life right okay all right so emotionally unavailable men women cat dog whatever are basically non-committal okay those these are non-committal people these are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you uh with anything or with anybody it, it might spill over into every facet of their life we're talking about more so relationships romantic relationships um so that's that's what we have here not they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people they could be married uh in love with another or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit, um, and which hence they are emotional, emotionally unavailable. So when we look at, when we dissect this, this term here, we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable. The mind wants to rationalize that that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that no 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because 
you know, they tell me how much they like me, they compliment me, they touch me, we have sex, blah, blah, blah. So you rationalize and you say, they're not emotionally unavailable. They are whatever you want to deem them in, as. But emotionally unavailable, what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you. See, an investment is it's a relationship. It's I put in and then I'm going to receive out. It is um, it is equal in a sense, suppo supposedly, you know. Um, it is a relationship. It, it could be if an if-then relationship. If I do this, then I'll get this. This type of person, the emotionally unavailable person, is not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me. Well, let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are. They're complimentary. They're seductive. You know, so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look, well, that is a key factor of an unavailable it emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason we've got some reasons here could be more uh to invest emotionally Okay, so you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes. So let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine. So if they tell you that we're meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my turn my terms, my routine, and their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days, maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No. They're not into that. There's no um investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay? So this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman. Uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through 
relationships. Some of you even going through life. No real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah. Uh, contentment. Yeah. In this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more and more and more, better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are, what you want, and then you can start to ask the, answer some of these questions like what is my end game, right? Okay, so anyway, moving right along. You say, um, I say, what is your end game? Most of you are going to say it's commitment. You want this person, this non-committal person to commit. Okay, so you're asking for something, um, you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving. Or maybe they don't even know how to give, right? So you're trying to get water from the rock. Okay, granted. It can happen. It can happen. But I do want you to know that this is not, this is not a situation an emotionally unavailable person. This is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just it's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment, and you tell the person and they say, Great, I've been non-committal all this time, and you've come along and asked me for a commitment, and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. B, here's the tarot for you. The Page of Swords. Be inquisitive, be curious, be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person. Learn your person. This is if you want commitment. Learn this person so you know what you're dealing with. You know who you're dealing with. The most, I say this every single time, or I ask the question, every time I, I do a reading, a personal reading, the, the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this, and how do they feel about this, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth, expecting, uh, the asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years. Well, we know that that is not the truth. You, We both go on about our lives. You find out that I've only been doing YouTube videos for two years. Uh, well, three years. And then you say, you come back to me. You say, well, I, I asked you the question. How long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I ha you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. 
Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along. You want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So, you, you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman will probably, most likely elude or or move toward toward evasiveness you start asking questions it's no more surface level you're trying to go deep you know um you may say well i only see you on wednesday and friday what are you doing you know the other days of the week or i know you see you work blah 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 but um maybe we can get together on one of those other days if they start to be evasive then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games. They give you just a little bit or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavailable, you know, emotionally unavailable person. All right? Because they become the seven of swords. Now, at this point, you can deal with this shit, I wouldn't. Um, if you want to continue to deal with this, state your claim. Be the ace of swords. Stating your claim is, I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom, outside of doing something like going to dinner or um, drinks. I just, I want to really spend more time with you, around you, because I would like to get to know you, all right? They're probably gonna run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid, the rigidness of their routine, right? So, um, in stating your claim, you say, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be. This is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you, uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim, and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but, but do understand that good news 
and, and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting and you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You stated your claim. You've created the boundaries and now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They they still come back around being evasive, seductive, you know, the same old thing that you might need to, uh, this is why the, I put the world here. You Now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? you Some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is hence that's the operative word. It can be done. You're gonna have to turn into the world, learn the lesson, walk away. A person can institute these types, this type of behavior, when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own, and there's no trauma. Um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this and, you're, and you can walk away. Be able to walk away. Um, emotionally um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you if the result is this person is coming back and being the same. And some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and um, giving you exactly what you want. Still, the world. Now you're going to the next chapter. Because you now know how to deal with, with situations. You can readily identify. Also, with me writing... The tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business, or family, or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be... Or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy? And you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more cu curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know him. You do need to do the investigative work. The page of swords is the investigator. Because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the king of swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning him, right? So... We have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing. It talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for, for anybody. Um, 
share this video, okay? Thank you guys. Take care, guys.